As a teacher, I'm always trying to convince my students to memorize the quadratic formula, and they always look at me funny because it's long. <laughs> they think there's no way they're going to memorize it. But I memorized it in high school, and actually it really has served me well since. Um, you use the quadratic formula quite a bit as a part of other uh, more complex processes later in math. So to memorize it uh, really will save you time in the long run, and it's not nearly as long as it looks. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a, C, all over 2A. It looks all long and ugly and complex, but mostly because that square root symbol tends to freak us out from any distance. <laughs> so I want to apply this to a couple more questions. I only got a chance to do one in the other video, um, so I'm going to really quickly run through example A and uh, parts B and C if we can, but we'll start with B here. So uh, B was, let me get the text here, here we go x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. So we need to find a, b, and c. So a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 5. Coefficients of those three terms. Put those into our quadratic formula, and we get negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So now we simplify everything we can. We get negative negative 6, that's just 6, plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared, that's 36, minus 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 5 is 20, so minus 20, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So now we have 36 minus 20, that's 16. So we have 6 plus or minus square root of 16 over 2. And this, by the way, in case it wasn't uh, clear before, this right here is why we have the plus and the minus outside. Because as we take the square root of 16, we actually get two answers. We get 4 and negative 4 which is why we have plus and minus right here. So we, at this point, our answer splits, and we get 6 plus 4 over 2, and we get 6 minus 4 over 2. So we have 10 over 2, which is 5, and we have 2 over 2, which is 1. So our two answers then are 5 and 1. So let's really quickly see if we can get through example C as well. Give you a little bit more to practice with. C would be negative 4x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. So here our a is negative 4, our b is 1, and our c is also 1. So we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Yeah, so now we can simplify. We have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of, I'll we'll write those in negative 1 plus or minus square root of, we have 1 squared, that's 1, and then we have negative 4 times negative 4, that's 16. And 16 times 1 is just 16, so we have 1 plus 16 over 2 times negative 4, that's negative 8. So that gives us negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 17 over negative 8. So really we have two answers. We have negative 1 plus the square root of 17 over 8, over negative 8, and we have negative 1 minus the square root of 17 over negative 8. And square root of 17 is going to be a little bit more than 4, right? Because square root of 16 would be 4. So we're looking at something about uh, negative 1 plus 4, so something about 3 eighths, so approximately 3 eighths. And approximately negative 1 minus 4 would be negative 5, so Approximately, this would be negative, approximately positive 5 eighths. That's it. You can really leave your answer actually in this form. 
in most cases, unless they want an estimated decimal answer.